Wait, did I even? I'm sorry, sir. Oh, that's. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> you just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. What are you doing now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. I, I, I've been good. I literally just walked in. <laughs> What I thought it? this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. Gives you a hat almost exactly like the one Dick Mullen wears on the covers. Oh, wait, where did you get it? Just what Dick Mullen would ask. I got it from behind the curtains. I'm not really supposed to go there. A detective hat? Yes, just like the one Dick Mullen wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. We're like a little kid. We're just like a... I, I, I see myself as like a little kid, by the way. In this right. game. I have to get back to my homework now. Before mum notices. All yeah. right. See you around, this Annette. This is hard. Oh. She looks back at the infernal scribblings and her does. Maybe I should wait for her to stop speaking before I'm like... All right. See ya. Sweet. Um, encyclopedia. Okay. No, no detriments. Minus one suggestion, my, minus one savoir-faire. Two savoir-faire, okay. Which I think, or was it esprit de call that I needed to get the, the tie? If anything, this wide rim hat looks even better than the hat Dick Mullen wears. Dick Mullen is stupid. <laughs> Not even real. You're real. Your brain is real. Your real brain is inside the hat. There's a lot to parse there. If we take the hat off, does her brain go too? Okay, okay. Wait, wait, well, let's talk to her again. One last time before we just... Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime... All right, you got nothing to say. Because I'm... I'm gonna... Save it. The curtains tattered with aid. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Um, okay. This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid. Man, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. Okay, 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 okay. I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My god. Even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now, please step away from the curtain. She's almost begging you. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. This is what a child would say. No, please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. I gotta go talk to her. I'm so intrigued by this. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. 
Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. If it's just a storage room, then why does it have a 70s ward protecting it? It's just a storage room, then it wouldn't hurt if I just peeked inside. It's not like it's cursed, right? The ward. We're going to talk to her on her level. It's just for decoration. Wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile, then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Take it easy. You've broken her resistance. Pushing her further will gain nothing. Okay. How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Voice drops to a whisper. Okay. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Uh. Uh. Wait, that's it. There's something more, something more para, paranatural. Um. Oh, and that mentioned that the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. It sounds familiar. Hmm. Strange, I feel unwanted too. What does it mean? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse? Have you sought help from anyone? Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. I don't think the curse is real. I just want you to let me in there. Uh, let's, let's get some more information out of her. Why didn't you just tell me right away? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Okay. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Okay, that makes a weird kind of sense. Wow, void wraiths. You have new words. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage-like trinkets on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? You point at her necklace. Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. Oh, <laughs> she holds the pendant in her palm. Its ochre heart glistens under the lights. Uh, I was pretty compelled to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Okay, let's get real here. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate to see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. Psychic arts? Sounds right down our alley. Ha 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 ha! Drama! Hi! Help Annette. You're the master of psychic arts. Convince her to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. 92%! Don't XCOM me! Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her yeah. what world-class perfidy looks like. Yeah, I don't know what perfidy means, but... Wait, what if I don't want to lie? Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? Don't you think I haven't seen charlatans before? She looks skeptical. 
I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I have returned from the void. A paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. I don't know if we're using the right terminology here. The void. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one. And you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but... The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. I'm getting the impression that maybe he was sent... Kim was sent to, like, investigate us? Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. Wow, we got that esprit de call. I admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. You see, it's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. No, that's too, that's way too cheesy of a line. We're going to go with one. How do you know all this? Here we go. Your boards brought me here in the first place. The Simony's blood also runs through me. I am the void revenant. I have the powers to debat all the bad energies. Let's go with the wards. You're part Simonese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. See, if I'd gone with the other one, she would have been like, that sounds really dumb. <laughs> but I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. Just ask my partner, Kim. He'll vouch for me. Fuck. I don't trust Kim right now. I mean, we don't. our rapport isn't that good. We're going to go. We're doing this ourselves. Your family is safe. Phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? Actually, I'm not really feeling the vibe anymore. The psychic force has left me. On my honor. Properly spelled with a U. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. A timid sigh of relief, followed by a cautious smile. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. The entity. Yes, a malignant entity that lives inside the chimney. It takes the form of a woman. A witch, most likely. She or it must be connected to the curse somehow. So I feel like this is where my morale might come in handy over like maybe our health. When we're dealing with these spirits. Or is this all just like complete bullshit? <laughs> I didn't see anything. We might go in there and there's just, this is just all bullshit, right? Chimneys aren't big enough for that. Uh, this sounds like bullshit though. But now, this is like we're taking what she's saying literally, which could also... I don't like either of these choices. But maybe it doesn't matter at this point. Let's go with number one. Chimneys are... That's... Number one's worked for us. No. This chimney is part of the building's central furnace. Okay. And it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Yes! Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. Oh, God. Uh, farewell for now, book peddler. Quick save. Investigate the doomed commercial area. People say the commercial building on the plaza is cursed. No business will ever thrive there without going bankrupt. We promise Pleasance you'll look into it. Enter the sealed door behind the bookstore and find out what happened to the companies there. Search for the malignant entity Pleasant said she uh, lives inside a chimney. Find a way in. Guys, I am, this is, this is the best. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. 
A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Let's go. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards, your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! A small terrified O escapes from Pleasant as she tries her best to look away, her brown face buried in her hands. Okay, so, oh, Jesus, that's scary. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. Oh my God, it's like a Victorian hair dryer. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Okay, it's not that scary. Now that I've gotten a better look at it. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. So I could just break it down. Okay, but let's just unlock it. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Uh, Kim, maybe you should go first? Detective, you're the one in charge. Can I motion towards the door? Open the door and enter. Wait, what the f It's like a it's a gym? This is not what I expected to see. Oh, I could talk to him. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. What is this place? The tent stares at the dusty training equipment. Uh it's the netherworld beyond the veil. No, it's a gym. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. Kim just has no goddamn imagination. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. If there's a reason why no one's been here for ages. Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. There's probably a reason, though. Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? Can I kill Kim? Is that... Kim's like no fucking fun. Wait, we're probably right-handed. No, we're left-handed. I love the shadows. I, did, I honestly didn't expect there to be a lighting system like that in this game. Ooh, shot put ball. We can sell it for 450. Oh, or if that's what it's worth. Did I? Yeah, I think I, I think I read that before. I wonder if there is a place we can sell stuff like this, though. I mean, it's got a value, so surely we must be able to sell it. A ball used for playing shot put, a favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. Shop? What? Is it? When? Do you... Isn't that like an Olympic sport? I don't think I've ever seen. <laughs> I I'm thinking like like uh, lawn bowling. Maybe it uses the same balls. You feel like sh I've never seen like a bunch of like old men in a field doing shot put. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it to sell such a beautiful old school sport equipment be a sin okay sure these posters say this poster says Sidious Fortis the rest is worn off something about strong oh no don't lift that That's... a barbell lies on the floor the color has worn off its weight plates at least take your pants off before you lift that it's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. 
show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Oh, it says trivial success. Okay. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Oh. Why does it feel so familiar? That is so nuts that we just had three checks in a row. Of successes. That's great. I mean, there's no fucking way we're going to lift that. Uh, is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? <laughs> we're just... What? What makes you think you're a weightlifter? What about what you've experienced so far <laughs> makes you think you're a weightlifter? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. Yeah, this is this is the imagination choice. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. Uh, what kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Okay. We'll let that go then. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. Maybe we were a shot put champion. It's just a memory. Hmm. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not... <sighs> I'm not trying that. That's that's a ridiculous check. I'm just going to end up having to heal myself because it's going to strangle me. We're not wall bars. They look unsafe. I like I like being tight in for this section. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Oh god. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Poor animals, no rest for their bodies after death? Oh, fuck. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Dem demijohn? I don't, I'm not familiar with that either. Guys, I don't like this! Hold me! Airship rotors covered in spiders' webs. They remind you of blades. Oh, man. We oh, just like doubled our cat. I could buy that book now. A naked mannequin torso, strange yellow color. Looks like there's light coming from there. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. I'd wear that as like a, a robe. Oh, yes, we're getting rich. That's some real money right there. Dare to make that joke. Skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Production schedule filament memory? What the hell? It's like a cube? Memory cube? The cube-like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hand. It's intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads production schedule. Note, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Of course, that's obvious. Still wrote, okay. Slipstream logo. Uh ho. Oh. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes 
like some ancient cave mural. It's like an elf with a sword? Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Let's just start from the top, the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? I do, I do kind of like that Kim is just going along with this, though. Like, he's not complaining, he's just like, he's, I guess he's more interested than he leads on in our craziness. One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. This is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. Uh... The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. I've got another question for you guys in the comment section. Feel free to answer this. Is the, like... Is this world derived from something else or is this just like totally made up this game i mean like it's not there's no system it's based on or anything like that right or like no dare i say lore it's based on an inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welking creatures hmm tenant can't help but comment uh, why would I spend so much time on this? Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? So many questions. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. <laughs> Had to be educational. Let's move on. No, we're not moving on yet. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Okay. So we're... Are we assuming that this is like a... a Role-playing game or something? I have so many questions. Uh, let's go with the one of them is a Welkin supremacist. I like that we're like whispering it. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. Tenet nods at the Welkin's facial hair. He's just like placating us. So who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Okay. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. Let's check out the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark carcasses and bones and those are photos are not drawings you see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers boreal dvorg yurts under the snow great mammoth like beasts of burden a pinned postcard reads the heat death scenario a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun drifting through the universe so this is just like a design for a role-playing game. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Okay. Oh, right. Project Dread Board. Everyone is constantly teetering on the edge of the abyss. I didn't even read that. An abyss of production. These squares look orderly, but beneath them is chaos. Worry. Pain. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 
tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. God, this really is fucking dread. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. What was the... Take a look at our inventory in a second. I was wondering what we... Is that what we picked up? I don't think so. The Notes. handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. Okay. Production schedule, filament memory. Okay. Guys, there's freaking weird sounds. Oh, is this the computer this thing? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. There's no power, though. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. Uh, says the lieutenant watching you circle around the machine. Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Turn on the... There's no power. The machine lights up oh. like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. This is really freaking me out. Let's look inside. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. We had to pass the check. We can't just choose to insert it. Okay. Like Let's a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Let's play it. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? Shit. <laughs> the static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident en rue de Saint-Gueslaine. This is East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. What? Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Uh, what's the production schedule? Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Uh, uh, what are you, a machine or are you alive? Oh. Um. See if they're alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now please repeat. Is this the production schedule? She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Tenant whispers into your Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're <laughs> here because radio computer guys are all paired. Um Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for the accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely, doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. For the first time, you hear her chuckle through the rustle of static. That's why she does this. 
Now please tell me the reason for your call for Fortress Accident. Um... Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. Hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. Ah! That's not bad. Uh... Wow, so conceptual. Hmm. And what's that... This interactive Colin radio game? Any other questions? Uh, okay. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Oh, you mean that glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. You should ask her for a hint. Uh, password. I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? This is the police! Please open this! Okay. No. Shit. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Is it my birthday? Still no. This is the police! Please open this thing! I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. All right, she's got me there. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? She sounds cold in the damp air. I don't know. Received. I will register this login attempt. Shit! Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Ah, uh, that's all for now. Thank you and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. What is recent play and print keys shine on the keyboard? Let's try print. Nothing happens. Okay, should I? Let's look. Ar We're gonna leave and we'll look around. Maybe we can find the password. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. One thing I'm curious about is if I actually have to remember anything or like write anything down or if we found the answer to something if it just pops up as an option. Don't tell me. By the way, I don't actually want that answer. We'll find out. A diagram for summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. I love what they were reading so much into this. The whole thing resembles Kadran mosaic tiles. Very pedantic. Damn. Hold on. How do I know what Kadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. So what am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes too, sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Repeater, like the, this is like the radio network for this, this game or whatever. Uh, of course, the anatomy of the curse. Perhaps the web is comprised of radio stations all lead back to one red heart titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone. 
left unrealized. But they still have these, like... She still is she the only one that's still active in this? Just waiting for calls that she never gets or something? There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My God. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Lieutenant leans closer, his fingers uh, tracking the maddening rhizome. Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained fingers clean. What else? Squint at the lines. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. I wonder if we could have passed a check there to find out more. Oh. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer? Chalkboard and fireplace. Someone tried to exercise the curse using technology. It's like an undercover counterintelligence program. It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? See, now, that's the right answer. <laughs> but this is the answer. This is the right answer. Someone tried to exercise the curse using technology. No, that's not it. I think... Tana takes a step back, steepling his hands. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. That is madness. Uh, and this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game with heat death thrown in. God, I was really hoping this would be a real thing. <laughs> Fuck. Super cool. Someone <laughs> should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. Totally agree. How are they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. Hmm. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The lieutenant tilts his head, thinking... They were insane if they thought they could do this. It was just a play to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. The curse got them. I see no other explanation. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. Do we have money? Let's give them more money so they can finish it and make it even bigger. <laughs> Do we have money? Well, you've got seven bucks, dude. Huh. The cur nah, I kind of want to pick this, but I also kind of want to pick this because this is like, this just feels right. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. We made him half smile. We got Kim to smile. That should be worth like 10 XP. Half smile breaks out on his face. It's too late for that. Okay. He says, looking around the derelict room, the pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay. Let's keep moving. Shit. Um. Maybe there's a password over here? Oh, I think I have auto run on. If you hit caps lock, I think it's auto run. Scribbled across the notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Frick. Maybe I'll find something else. 